Tonight, we come together across a land that stretches far and wide, rich in history and culture, full of diverse communities, offering endless opportunity. Opportunities realised by those who at their heart believe we can be better and do better. Welcome to the 21st EY Entrepreneur of the Year Awards live around Australia. And what a ride it's been to get here tonight. It feels like we've all been on a journey together through endless change. A journey that's challenged us collectively and individually. And yet through this, we've seen humanity shine and we've seen the heart of the entrepreneur thrive when it's been needed the most. And that is what tonight is all about, celebrating the heart of the entrepreneur. We're also extremely privileged to welcome the stunning Missy Higgins for an intimate performance. And we'll be heading around the country to meet our six standout finalists in just a moment. But first, let's get to know our four iconic judges. One of the things about life is, you know, getting to the top of the mountain isn't necessarily the, the, the prize. You get up there and you say, okay, what's next? You know, what happens from here? When I think about what's at the heart of an entrepreneur, I think it is courage. I think it is boldness, but are willing to take a risk. The best entrepreneurs I've ever worked with or seen in operation are the ones that have a beautiful idea and have the capacity and the confidence to think they can solve a challenge to move on from business as usual. So what I do love is making sure you accept you can never be good at everything and you need to accept that others are going to contribute on the journey. Create a team that is going to be well best so you can be exceptional. Lucy, what lens do you look through when judging? Well, entrepreneurs, as we've just heard, have all sorts of characteristics and qualities, and it's a mix, it's a blend. They have to have a vision and a great idea and the imagination to fulfill their idea. They need to have the energy and the optimism and the sense of positivity to actually think they can change the world. Thanks, Lucy. We also have Jack Cowan. What do you think is at the heart of the entrepreneur? My favorite definition of an entrepreneur is that it is a cross between an astronomer and a microbiologist. That may sound strange, but the astronomer looks through his telescope at the stars, the big picture, the universe. The microbiologist looks through the microscope at the minutia of cells and, and the, the detail of business. If you are just the astronomer or if you are just the microbiologist, it doesn't work. The entrepreneur has to be able to do both. Now from Jack, we go to Ronnie Khan. And as someone who is overflowing with passion and purpose, tell us why are these qualities so important for entrepreneurs? You know, I think passion is infectious. And an entrepreneur that has got an idea and has to express that to others, to potential investors, to get people along the journey, to share their vision, needs all the tools they can get. And passion is incredibly powerful. And finally, we welcome Glenn Richards. You've been involved in the program for many years. What opportunities do you see ahead for tonight's winners? And what will winning tonight mean beyond the award itself? I don't know if they've actually turned up to enter the award, I think they've actually been coerced because they know how important relationships are, collaboration um, and, and meeting people and, and I think they've entered these awards to get all the other benefits out rather than be that hero person that wins the award. They're, they're going to get so much side benefit out of what this program brings to entrepreneurship in Australia. Right now, the whole reason we are here tonight, let's get to know our six finalists a little better. You don't necessarily need to love what you do in the very, very early stages because you're trying to figure out what works. You need to love the reason why you're doing it. And that may be financial in the early stages. But yeah, I think that everyone just needs to be incredibly obsessed with that idea so that when they get kicked on and kicked down and things just go bad, they just don't give up. What makes entrepreneurs tick? I think they're crazy. If you talk to my staff, you talk to Hugo, who's head of HR, he says we've got the crazy gene. Do you know what I mean? We don't take no for an answer. We just keep looking for solutions. We fail fast, move on. Being an entrepreneur, trying to solve a problem that you use a different way. 
and also need to convince the other shareholders or stakeholders to working together to solve a problem in a different way, or we say in a better way. The moment came for me when I was looking after a patient in an intensive care unit who was dying from swine flu. And so there was a realisation that this was a worthwhile thing to do. That if we could diagnose people earlier, we could connect them to treatment, we would be able to make a dent in the overall burden of this disease globally. Me being diagnosed with my autoimmune disease that was really debilitating was a catalyst for me to take some time out to reassess what my purpose is in this world and it's to help to make this world a better place through health and fitness to be able to empower people to be the best versions of themselves. We don't say to people, where do you want to be in five years? We say, where do you want to be in life and how do we help you get there? That's the purpose, that's what I'm about. It's time to welcome Missy Higgins in Melbourne. Missy, thank you for joining us tonight. You are just about to play special two for us, but before you do, I've been thinking, being a groundbreaking musician requires ambition, resilience and tenacity, not too dissimilar to entrepreneurs. What would you say lies at the heart of your incredible career success? Making sure that I stay passionate about what I do and making sure that I try to hold on to why I started doing it in the first place, why I got into this in the first place. It was because I loved it and I was drawn to it because it was what, it was what fed me, it was what um, gave me life. And trying to hold on to that passion is really important and ne never forgetting um, why you started doing it in the first place. I'm here with Lucy Turnbull, Jack Cowan, Ronnie Kahn and Glenn Richards. With the judging criteria in mind and the breadth of knowledge at the judging table, what's the one thing that stood out for you amongst this year's finalists? Well, the diversity. When you hear the full list of, um, of finalists, you'll be, you know, I, I hope everyone will be blown away by the diversity of the people who are finalists, but also by the diversity of businesses that they are starting or engaged in. Right now, it's time for our first award of the night, the People's Choice Award. Over the past few months, we've shared the inspirational stories of our finalists and asked you, the audience, to vote for the entrepreneur who inspires you the most. To announce the winner, I'd like to welcome from our principal sponsor, ComBank, Rebecca Warren, General Manager, Business and Institutional Bank Marketing. Thank you, Brooke. I'm delighted to be here on behalf of Commonwealth Bank to present this award. I'm pleased to announce the winner of the People's Choice Award is... Isa Basha. Isa, I've seen Thank the heartwarming so responses to your finalist video on social uh, media. With entrepreneurs and the business community around the country voting, what does it mean to you to win this award tonight? It's a reflection of not only me, our, all the people that, that are behind the scenes. It's, uh, it's, it's truly an honour to, to get the award, but I, 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 I truly uh, do want to reinforce the point that, you know, what, what goes to fulfilling that vision and that and that mission is, is a big team and this big army and it's the, the wife, the kids that make the sacrifices, not seeing their dad and their husband. Okay, it's come to that time of the night. The reason we are all here and watching around the country, the announcement of the EY Entrepreneur of the Year 2021. And to announce the winner, EY Regional Managing Partner and CEO Oceania, David LaRocca. At EY, we believe entrepreneurs make the world a better place. Through our own programs and our sponsorships of entrepreneurial awards and organisations, we celebrate and support the unstoppable individuals who see beyond the horizon, shaping new industries, driving economic growth, delivering more sustainable approaches and reimagining our future. And so let's move to the most important part of tonight. And I'm really proud uh, and excited to be announcing the winner of the EY Entrepreneur of the Year 2021. And the winner is Linda Brown. Yes, we did! Yeah, give her a round of applause. Amazing. Yeah. Linda, is, is there anyone you would most like to thank? <laughs> the confetti cannon going off in the background there. Linda, is there anyone that you, you want to thank in particular? Yeah, I mean, I want to thank my team. I want to thank EY. I want to thank Qantas. I want to thank Combank. They were with us at the start of creating this new university, Goldman Sachs, who helped us sell it. The first one we ever sold. 
and my husband, to my whole family, who won Social Enterprise of the Year also with Fruit to Work. This is what we believe in. We re I just am so proud that a university has won, and a CEO of a university has won um, Entrepreneur of the Year. And this is what we need. We need to change the, the dynamic from within the system. So I'm incredibly proud, and Russ and the EY team have been right. <laughs>《最大的思考》是做在我的袜子和衣裳上，通常在周日的早上，在野外的山里，跟我的野生牧羊，那些疯狂的牧羊们的羊群。For me, the standout moment is our first graduation. You know what I mean? These people trusted us. They came to a brand new university to see them walking across the stage. That, that was a standout moment. That was stunning. 